In this video, I'm going to work through an example for how to determine the Weibull modulus and the reference stress. The first step is to conduct many experiments. And in this case, we want to have a sufficiently large value of n for the number of experiments in order that we get a better statistical fit. So the higher the value of n, the better our statistical confidence in our results will be. So let's say that we uh, conduct our tests and we measure the following failure strengths, and these are in units of megapascals. So we have conducted 12 tests here, and the next step is that we want to list the failure stresses from minimum to maximum. So here I have just resorted the numbers that were on that list in order from smallest to largest, and just a reminder again that these values are given in MPA. The next step is that we want to find the cumulative probability of failure. When we have a discrete list like this, we can find the cumulative probability of failure from this expression over here. In the end, we'll still use the other expression to find m and sigma naught, but just to find the probability of failure of each one of these, we use this expression here. So i is the number of the tests, so, so we'd plug in 1 in the first case, and n is the total number of tests. So in this particular example, n is equal to 12. So let's take a look at what those values end up being. So here we have, again, just sort of the, the ranking of the sample in the failure order. We have the failure stress in MPA, and in this column we have the cumulative probability of failure going from very near zero here to nearly one up here. Now, while we don't have to do this necessarily, let's just plot the probability of failure as a function of stress so that we can see how this data looks. So here we have the data. This is probability of failure versus failure stress. Uh, the data is not particularly smooth, necessarily. We see a, a big jump right here in the failure stresses. If we think back to the previous video and what that value of sigma naught means, we can expect probably to find a value of sigma naught somewhere around here, maybe in the 290 MPA range. So let's go from here and try to determine numerically the values of m, the Weibull modulus, and sigma naught, that reference stress. So I showed the derivation in the previous video of how we got to this point, but essentially we're going to plot this value here as our y value, and ln of sigma as our x value, such that the value of m will come out of here as the slope, and this term here will be the intercept of this line. So we would essentially apply this equation to each of the x, uh, each of the stress and the pf values, and then we will plot those. So let's see how that looks. Okay, so here we have this plot. So we took each stress value and did its natural log, and that gave us the x value. And then we did ln of ln of 1 over 1 minus pf. That gave us the y value. Now, I said this was going to be a line, and it is more or less linear, but it's not an exactly perfect line, and that's fine because m and sigma naught really are fitting parameters for this data. So our next step is to identify, uh, I mean, ideally we want to find the best fit line from a mathematical approach, but short of that is to essentially sort of eyeball what is the best fit line for this data. Okay, so here's a line that we fit through the data, and we can now identify what is the slope of this line. And we do that just like we do with any other line. We're gonna pick off uh, two sets of points 
and compare delta y to delta x to find the slope of our line. Okay, so let's consider these two points that I've marked off here. So we're going to read that the x value is 5.78, and here the x value is 5.5, .5. and over here the y value I'm taking to be negative 2.58, and here to be uh, 1.39. Okay, so then we can find that uh, delta y over delta x. In doing this, we find a value for m as both the slope of this line and the Weibull modulus of 14.18. So we can use that then to find b, the intercept, and also then to go from B to finding sigma naught. Okay, so we just use the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, and we plug in one set of our points. So we had this value of y for this value of x, and we solve for b equals negative 80.57. And we know that b is equal to negative m ln of sigma naught, and so we can rearrange this to find that sigma naught is equal to e to the negative b divided by m. And when we do that, we end up with a value of sigma naught equal to 293 MPa. So that's actually pretty close to what we were expecting, based on our uh, initial analysis. So in this case, we had sigma naught equals 293, and just sort of with eyeballing it on the line, we found m equals 14.18. If we actually do this with mathematical fit to the data in terms of really doing the best fit line, we end up with a value of 13.1 for m, and 294 MPa for sigma naught. So we're really not that far off. And just to sort of close the loop here, let's take a look at these fitting parameters, these ones here that I did mathematically alongside with the data. And so here it is. This is the same data that we looked at before. Remember, we kind of had this sharp step in it and this solid line here is with the fitting parameters of m equals 13.1 and sigma naught equals 294 MPa. So that's the process by which we take discrete fractured data and are able to determine the values of the Weibull modulus and the reference stress.